1959, a young man left Hong Kong for the United States to claim his birthright citizenship. He was born on November 27, 1940 in San Francisco, but his family had returned to Hong Kong when he was an infant. His name was Bruce Lee. A philosophy major at the University of Washington, he supported himself by teaching fellow students his beloved Kung Fu. Here he met his future wife, Linda. They would have two children, Brandon and Shannon. Of all his students, they were Bruce's favorite. By 1964, he had two Kung Fu schools, one in Seattle and the other in Oakland, California. Bruce taught anyone who was interested, regardless of race. His goal was to teach Kung Fu to many people all over America and even to start a chain of uh, schools around the country and expose Americans to his Chinese culture and martial arts. When a group of Chinese martial arts masters ordered him to stop teaching non-Asians, he offered instead to fight their top man. Bruce defeated his opponent, keeping the right to teach whomever he wanted. After a successful screen test, Bruce was cast in the Green Hornet, based on the popular comic book hero, as the loyal sidekick, Kato. When the show premiered in 1966, American audiences were amazed. Producers asked Bruce to slow down because his movements were too fast for the camera. Bruce Lee comes along in sort of cultural history at a time when the general impression of China and of Chinese people for the previous hundred years or so has been that uh, sort of poor, uneducated, menial laborers and China is considered a dysfunctional country. Bruce Lee creates this whole new persona. The Green Hornet was canceled after just one season and Bruce once again taught lessons, this time privately, often to celebrities like James Coburn and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He also began to develop his own martial arts philosophy, known as Jeet Kune Do, or the way of the intercepting fist. He suffered a serious back injury while training, one that doctors said would prevent him from performing martial arts ever again. The important point is that the back injury was a turning point in his life, and the, the result of which was all of those writings he was able to do. Over a period of six months, he made a baffling recovery. Though he would continue to suffer back problems for the rest of his life, he had sculpted one of the most impressive physiques imaginable. Unable to break into Hollywood, Bruce returned to Hong Kong. Already immensely popular in Asia because of his role as Kato, he signed a contract with Golden Harvest Studios for a series of movies. The first, 1971's The Big Boss, elevated him to superstardom. By the time he began work on The Game of Death in 1972, Bruce had evolved not only into a star, but also a producer and director. Bruce halted production on this film when Warner Brothers offered a joint collaboration on a new picture called Enter the Dragon. Bruce Lee has really transcended this idea of either being a martial artist, a movie star, a philosophical teacher, or even being Chinese. He's sort of become a heroic figure and an, and an icon of righteousness uh, to the world. After finishing Enter the Dragon, Bruce returned to Hong Kong to pick up the game of death. On the night of July 20th, 1973, he was offered a prescription painkiller for a headache. When he could not be woken, he was rushed to a hospital where doctors pronounced him dead. An autopsy revealed excessive swelling of the brain, the result of an adverse reaction to the painkiller. It was six days before the premiere of Enter the Dragon.